Hello everyone and welcome back to the Rise of Kingdom video. This is your boy Legend Ronnie and today we have Flavius Aetius. I'm gonna answer you the question, is he good for field fighting? I had this question quite a couple of times and we're gonna explore his best talents and his best pairings. If he's going to be good for field fighting or his pairings for garrison. First thing first, some of you might be new to the channel so i want to give you some advices regarding commanders in general to know approximately the stars that you need and the sculptures that you need to max commanders it's also very important to know that talents only work from the primary commander equipment only work from the primary commander now going further about Flavius Aetius being used for field fighting is he good for that role the answer is yes any commander for that matter in rise of kingdoms they are also good for field fighting but the question is are they the best to use are they really exceptional for field fighting or there is much better commanders to use for that role well the answer is there are much better commanders to use for that role but i have read flavius atius skills and i have read them in details and obviously i'm going to explain a little bit in this video about that and I found him to be pretty interesting commander to be used for field fighting. From my perspective and from my point of view, when I'm field fighting, I like to bring a lot of AoE marchers. Right, I explained this in some of my other videos. When you go in the murder ball, not just yourself with your marchers, you go with your allies, with your members, there is quite a lot of AoE there. So the more AoE you have, the better it is for your teammates because you're also helping them while just doing single target damage is a little bit individual. When commanders like the new CP Africanus that hits up to three targets and also cause some health reduction, it's helping everybody in the murder board, or at least anybody who is hitting those three marchers that you're also AOE. So this kind of brings a lot of universal utilities, for example, for CP Africanus and Flavius Aetius, is kind of an individual march, something similar to Pakal and Harald. Even though Pakal and Harald is very well known, is very commonly used in the game, they are a, a very individual march, similar to Attila Takeda, because Pakal and Harald, they do individual damage, they do single target damage. Harald, in order to activate his AoE, he needs to be surrounded. So you need to wait until you get attacked, which if you want to ask me, kind of sucks a little bit to wait to get attacked. While many other commanders into the game, they just do AoE with the primary skill without waiting to be attacked. Let's go and let's see a little bit about Flavius Aetius skills. And let, let's see what exactly will be used if you want to put this commander on the field. Primary skill is very strong. 2300 damage factor, that is huge. And then when the target is less than 50%, when you're swarming a target, it will eventually go under 50%. You will do additional damage factor. So that can definitely be some very interesting high nuking power that you can do on a single target. His second skill, it gives attack, defense and health. But it's mentioning over here that when troops are garrison, increase units defense and health. So this only works when this commander is garrisoning your city garrisoning a flag garrisoning a pass a fortress something that has to do with garrison arc of osiris etc on the field if you want to use him on the field you only benefit from 15 percent attack which everybody knows that attack is not the best stat for infantry it's something i wouldn't advise to boost on infantry in rare situation because there's only legendary weapons that give attack well, that's kind of the only boost that I would give to infantry. If you really want a short explanation why I think the attack is not the best, you can look at Pakal and Harald and you can do the math, like how much attack they are providing together, Pakal with Harald even when rallying, and then ask yourself, why are they doing so bad when rallying? Like even a Jatwiga and YSS beats them in a one-on-one -on -one garrison or... If you're lucky enough, you might just get even trades with a Pakal and Harald versus Cavs with all that attack, right? So that's kind of the theory behind it, just the so short version of it. Going on to the third skill, and this is where I found this to be very, very interesting. Counterattack damage bonus 20%, and then there is a dot, which means that this 20% counterattack should work at any times. 
Going on to his fourth skill, increase all damage dealt by 10%. While launching a normal attack against a target inflicted with additional damage effect, there is a 100% chance if the skill is maxed to silence the target for 2 seconds, and this can apply every 7 seconds. This is dependent by the primary skill. So what, which is the only two things that you don't have for Flavius Aetius on field fighting? The infantry defense and health, which honestly is probably one of the most important stats for infantry. You have only the infantry attack. And on the third one, you cannot apply stacks. So the infantry can do more damage on the target. But there is a but. We have his expertise, which decreases all damage taken by 10%. So this is really great for field fighting. This is the third strong thing that Flavius Aetius has for field fighting when it comes to infantry. The number one was the counterattack. The number two was the 10% all damage bonus, which by the way, all damage is skill damage, normal attack and counterattack. And as an addition, when using an the skill, there is a 30% chance of inflicting two stacks of debuff. And this, can, this effect can trigger once every 10 seconds. Now, unfortunately, it's going to be very hard to get those debuffs off on a target, especially when you're swarming. But this could help if there is multiple Flavius Aetius swarming a target. So, for example, on a garrison, you're swarming a garrison. You never know. You want to put Flavius Aetius and you want to swarm a garrison. If you want the infantry to do more damage on the target, if you have 2-3 Flavius Aetius, then you might have the chance and the possibility to get these 10 stacks up to deal more damage. But the flavor about this expertise is the decrease all damage taken by 10%. So in my opinion, Flavius Aetius is quite an okay commander to use for field as well. Like I said, the only thing that I dislike is that he doesn't do AOE. So this is something that you wanna think about if you wanna max Flavius Aetius. His number one priority should be Garrison. So don't take this with uh, a lot of love saying, oh my god, I'm definitely doing Flavius Aetius for field fighting. There is much better options to go for field fighting. You have Guan Yu, you have the Scipio Africanus, uh, you have Alexander. And before I would do Flavius Aetius for field fighting, I would look at Pakal, I would look at Harald. So there is way, way better infantry commanders to do specifically for field. But the whole point in theory about this, if you want to do Flavius Aetius to have a good garrison, and you're thinking that he might just be stuck in garrison, you can 100% use this commander for field as well. You can still apply the silence on targets, because imagine when you're swarming a target, it's not just Flavius Aetius that does additional damage. You have Scipio that does additional damage with his third skill. Artemisia does additional damage factor as well with her uh, fourth skill. Then you have Cyrus that does some additional damage. And the list can go on. There's quite a dis decent amount of commanders that do additional damage. So it's not just from Flavius. So as long as there is some additional damage on the target, you can keep silencing the target. And this can also mean when you're swarming a flag. If there is enough marchers that swarm the flag that do additional damage and there is a couple of Flavius Aetius, it's not only the extra damage that the infantry can do on the flag, but you could also potentially keep silencing the flag. And like I said, single target, this is pretty huge. So imagine when you're swarming a flag, this is 2300 damage factor, and then you have the additional damage factor, which is 150 per turn for three turns. Now, who would I pair him if I would have to use him? Well, a nice pair for him would be Cipio Africanus for obvious reasons. Flavius Aetius with Cipio Africanus, so that way you can get the silence. But the problem is that the march itself would be a little bit squishy. The only defense that you get from all this march together is this infantry health 20%, which is pretty nice. And then this chance to get some damage taken reduction. And after that, you have the decrease all damage from uh, Flavius Aetius. So that's pretty much about it, which might just be enough for an infantry march. Another commander that I would uh, put Flavius Aetius with would be Harald. 20% counterattack damage. Harald does counterattack damage as well. You have the skill talent tree 
which by the way if you didn't know the skill talent tree can generate the the fastest rage or at least if you do the the necessary talent you can generate a decent amount of rage with the skill talent tree and then you have harald with another 20 percent counter attack damage and if you're surrounded it even increases the counter attack damage and you have some damage reduction as well so very very nice uh, combo but everybody knows that pakal with the defense talent tree and with the enhanced damage taken reduction and further damage taken reduction when surrounded as well this is kind of the match made pair but if you don't have pakal for example and you want to make another another decent combo for field flavius atius and harald can work very well for field and the list can go on you can put flavius atius second to guan i mean guan is well known for doing some crazy amount of damage and imagine that you have uh, flavius atius second guan does the aoe and then flavius does the 2300 behind guan because guan has the skill talent tree so we'll we'll get the benefits from all for one and clarity so it's going to be even more enhanced damage for flavius atius so i think there is quite a decent amount of combinations that you can do with flavius atius because quite a lot of his skills and very important ones still work for the field and this is something that i really like and i hope they're going to do more of this in the future i don't want garrison commanders to be tied up for garrison there is a couple of them for example that are pretty bad on the field and a lot of people are probably trying to use them such as theodora even though when she's expertise is 1705 targets and it has a circular area exactly like ysg but how many theodora do you see on the field none because her four skill which is probably the most important one only works in garrison and then you have the second skill when this commander leading the garrison so you have two skills which are tied up to garrison so that's a big no-no for Theo on field fighting and there is plenty of commanders that have the same issue same as uh, why says he has two of his skills while serving the garrisons of stronghold of your own city and then the the four skill when this commander leading the garrison of your own city or a stronghold so there's there's quite a decent amount of commanders that are so good in the game but they are tied up to garrison and that was kind of a um, reason why me personally i never focused on garrison commanders i felt that uh, it's not right to make commanders to be tied up for a specific role and you use them like a couple of days probably a couple of days in a kvk every four five months i mean think about it because to max legendary you spend 700 sculptures another interesting option that could be for flavius atius would be with pakal if you really want a single target super tanky combo you do pakal and flavius atius you have to keep in mind one percent more attack and lose five percent defense and this stack up to 15 times yeah because harald punishes a lot of people that are hitting him but that's the problem with harald he's keep increasing his um, defense decrease his tax on defense decrease and that is a big issue now if you would do Puck Hall in Flavius Atius, there's no defense decrease, but you don't do AoE because Flavius Atius is single target, Puck Hall is single target as well. But there's another thing there is a lot of all damage <laughs> taken reduced, and there's a lot of counter attack that both have together. While Puck Hall doesn't do very high damage single target, but Flavius Atius does. I wouldn't say that these two commanders will work as a rally composition but just as a field march composition it will be very interesting now let's go a little bit into garrisoning because if we want to go on pairs like how many pairs we can do we can talk about mehmed we can talk about sansu we can talk about trajan we can talk i mean this the list can go endlessly about how many pairs i just want to mention among the best pairs that i would probably use them for the field there's also cj that you can pair flavius with cj if you really want and the list can go on but regarding garrison because this is what this commander is really good at right this is what it excels i would say that the best match made pair for flavius etius is zenobia it's been a while and i was expecting this to be introduced at some point zenobia being primary and flavius etius being second if you put zenobia primary you can work on the talents pretty well to empower infantry a lot this is 
One thing that people don't take in consideration, a lot of, of people are still saying that YSS is going to be the, the match made pair for Flavius. But when you do talents for Zenobia and YSS, you cannot use hold the line. When the army led by this commander contains only infantry units, gives the troops a 10% chance to reduce damage taken is going to be 20% when it's maxed for the next two seconds after being attacked. I'm underlining after being attacked. So if you're doing mix of troops, Zenobia YSS, you cannot use hold the line. And pretty much all the talent trees with Zenobia right now, they don't have hold the line. Because if you do Zenobia and Flavius, you can do only infantry. And you don't have AOE, but if people swarm you, the more people swarm you, the more chances you'll get hold the line. This is the beauty about this, this talent when you do only infantry. And there's 20% all damage taken reduced that you'll keep getting all the time, all the time. While Flavius Aetius does a lot of counterattack damage, Zenobia has normal attack damage reduction and normal attack damage bonus, which, by the way, normal attack is counterattack as well. So if you pile up the counterattack that they both do together, that's quite a lot. Infantry attack, infantry health, damage to allied armies is increased, extra health, extra damage. When you get the expertise, there's a lot of health and there's a lot of damage increase. Additional damage factor, which is exactly what Flavius Aetius needs, so you can keep silencing the target. So is it really that easy? <laughs> it is. The Nobia and Flavius Aetius, it is a match-made pair for garrisoning. So let's say you want to do Flavius Aetius and why it says, like a lot of uh, people said, that it might just be the, the best pair. Because for obvious reasons, people, people think about the AoE. They think that if the garrison is not doing AoE, it's going to be easy swarmable and everybody will swarm it. People don't take in consideration the amount of counterattack that Zenobia and Flavius will do. Those marches, <laughs> if anybody will try to swarm, this garrison will melt. They will get punished so hard even if you don't have AoE. And let's say you want to do Flavius Aetius and a YSS in garrison, right? Because... You might want to have the AOE, you have the skill talent, you want to do a little bit more damage. You can't use hold the line. If you use YSS, this is 20% attack and defense that you really want to have. So you'll have to do a little bit of mix. 2-3% of the garrison will have to be mixed and hold the line will not work. That's why they are introducing these pairs. That's why they introduced Amani Tor, right? It's a match made pair for Artemisia. It was a visible match made pair for Artemisia. Because Amani Tor just cancels the silence of Artemisia's force kill. And you get this 50% damage for 5 seconds. And then Amani Tor and Artemisia, they just have a regular skill cycle. Non-interrupted skill cycle. In my opinion, it is exactly like I said in the previous video regarding uh, Flavius Aetius. I think it's super OP. And the game will come to a garrison meta again because of Flavius Aetius. And if you're wondering, can we do his time trees either for field or for garrison? Well, for field is pretty easy. We got infantry conquering and skill, but we don't need the conquering. We only need the skill and the infantry. You can do him exactly like Guan Yu. And if you're unhappy with the feral nature, then you can put more talents on Mars speed. So you you can make the march go a little bit faster because Flavius Aetius doesn't have any march speed. So for field, that's one thing you can do. But me personally, I would go for the Feral Nature. I would rather pop skills faster. Even if sometime will overrage, it's not a waste, but sometime will just help you generate skills faster so you can pop skills. And that would be really good for Flavius Aetius. And if you want to go for Garrison, we have Sansu, <laughs> his infantry, garrison, and skill. But my recommendation is that, is that Flavius Aetius should be uh, second in command. So going on to his talents, this is some of my old talents that I use with Sansu. Same is for the garrison. I believe that this used to be a city garrison, and this used to be a flag garrison. About three years ago, I think I used these talents. But now things are about to change. Right, so this is a, a Flavius Aetius Garrison talent tree, and that is for flags, passes, fortresses, etc., etc. Can possibly be used for your city as well. There's nothing wrong in it. 
There is one thing that you need to pay attention. There is only two talents on Undying Fury. So you can only get six rage because that's all the talents that you have. Now, if you're doing Flavius Aetius as a garrison and you want to use in primary, you'll have to use only infantry because that's why it's hold the line. If you want to try him with YSS, you have to drop hold the line. You have to put a talent, more talent in defense, and then you can go somewhere more and just get stats randomly from the garrison tree or from the skill tree and just get more stats, pump more stats. But in my opinion, if you do Flavius Aetius primary as a garrison, you definitely want, want to put just infantry in there. Now, this is just for the situation if someone wants to try Flavius Aetius first with um, Zenobia as a second. Maybe someone doesn't think that Zenobia should be first and Zenobia should be second, so you can get the skill talent tree. I still think Zenobia first would be much better because you get the damage boost from Zenobia and it will be much higher than a skill talent tree can offer. You'll get the 30% damage boost from Zenobia primary skill, which will boost Flavius Aetius. This will be a super mega solid talent tree. And if you'll do Zenobia primary, the talent tree should look similar. With hold the line and you'll get the rejuvenate from the skill tree. And like I said, this is going to be the meta garrison for a long time. Unless in two months, three months, we'll get some uber archers, super mega dope archers that will just uh, demolish them. Who knows? That might just be the thing. But I highly doubt it. I think they want this uh, garrison meta to go for a while because troops die very easy when you swarm flags or fortresses. So commanders that do a lot of counterattack kind of serves a good purpose. If you're thinking maybe Flavius Aetius with Constantine or, or some of the older commanders, either Garrison or just some of the older commanders, no, they just don't work. Don't think about that. Uh, Constantine or Varus or YSG. No, no, this, these things just went out the window a long time ago. It's going to be Zenobia. It's going to be Flavius Aetius with Zenobia or might be a small chance, but I give it a very small chance that YSS might play some roles because of the boats. Because people might just think that you're going to kill a lot more troops when you have the AOE boats from YSS, like people reinforcing the rally, joining the rally, exiting the rally so they can refresh the troops and so on. People might just think that... Um, the boats might just serve a better purpose because if you have Zenobia and Flavius then people can be all around the flag because you won't do any AOE right so people can just sit around the flag sing Kumbaya but if they want to swarm I think you'll punish them heavily let me know what you think in the comment section below this is your boy Geroni signing off peace out and take care see you on the next one and stay safe out there my friends